Madam President, thank you. Well, you know, the first thing that I wanted to do is that I wanted to just congratulate the uh, all three, Eddie and the, the student that, you know, who were elected as trustees for this, and I look forward to working with everybody in the next uh, upcoming years. And I also want to just say that I am sorry to see the two that are going, Barbara and Paul, and I wish them only the best. Now, going forward, uh, on uh, May 8th, I had the opportunity to go to Dutchess County BOCES as part of their audit committee. I was there at their audit meeting and their Dutchess County BOCES regular meeting. On the uh, 9th, I went to the Strategic Planning Committee. Didn't was able to stay the whole time, but I did go. On the 10th, I went to see Kitty Road Elementary School, Mary Poppins Jr. That was just, it was so much fun to watch the kids and the parents that they were singing the songs. Uh, 513, uh, the candidates night at uh, Wappingers Jr. I went to, unfortunately I didn't know it was canceled. On the, uh, on the 14th Albany, excuse me, uh, went to Albany lobbying, lobbying for New York State uh, School Board, so I went with Peggy. Uh, 15th, John Jay High School, they had the National Honor Society induction, there were a number of us that were there. On the 17th, John Jay High School had the blood drive that I went to. Uh, the 18th was Art in the Park, that was a fun thing to go see. And I know, Mr. Lumi, you were there, even though I teased you that you weren't. Um, uh, on the 21st, I came here just to watch the election results with everybody. The 22nd, John Jay uh, High School had, uh, uh, John Jay and RCK both had Memorial Day ceremonies that I was, had the privilege of attending that. Um, so thank you. Mrs. Goodman, nothing to it. Mr. Just want to take this opportunity to once again thank everyone in the community for re-electing me. Uh, your support I, I truly appreciate and I will continue to do the work that I started three years ago. I will uh, do the very best I can uh, for students, uh, all of our employees as well as uh, our community at large, taxpayers and so forth. So again, I'm humbled, I'm honored, I appreciate your support, and I thank you uh, extremely, very, very, very much. Mr. Lumia. First, I'd like to thank Barbara for the work that you've done here in the last three years, as well as Mr. Galera. Two exceptional good people, and uh, you both can be missed. Congratulations to the to new, new members. I look forward to working with you. And I hope uh, every time you come here, uh, Mary, Mary uh, you bring some donuts. Uh, well, nice. <laughs> Working on <laughs> homemade baked goods. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have a, a, lot, a lot to say, so I hope we get in within three minutes. First of all, congratulations to Mr. Banda and all the band and orchestra musicians for placing first and second place awards in the division at the Witch Tries to Run the Festival. I also want to acknowledge Mr. Sorrento, an Italian teacher, and the entire Honor Society students for holding a Buon Appetito night at RCK. The food was tasty, and the proceeds from the event will be contributed to a worthy cause determined in the near future. <coughs> also want to acknowledge and thank the RCK staff for their continued support for holding the 11th Senior Citizen Prom. Thanks to Outback Restaurant and other vendors for their contribution to this yearly event. In addition, I'd like to thank the RCK musicians, as well as DJ Mr. Bailey for providing the entertainment. Congratulations to the numerous students at John Jay for being recognized. Over 400 students, 450 students were recognized for their citizenship and character. Congratulations to the Ben White Junior High School to the specific number of students who were inducted into the people were, as well as the students both on RCK and John Jay were also inducted into the National Honor Society. I want to congratulate the entire musicians who participated in the Pyramid Concert at RCK. It's amazing that the level of performance made by the students admires the chief. As usual, the musicians at RCK were exceptional. I want to thank the teachers for the dedication to the music program. I'm almost at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank all the art teachers for all their demanding work. I don't think people realize just how much work it takes for these people to get <laughs>
I'd also like to uh, say congratulations to Mr. Slowshower on your re-election uh, re and uh, Ms. Johnson and Mr. Lopez on your election to the Board of Education. Thank you for your willingness to serve the, uh, the school community in this capacity. I wish you well. I went to Albany with Mr. Rubin for uh, lobbying on behalf of the school districts, and uh, that was always interesting, and we ran, ran, ran from place to office to office, meeting the various uh, legislators, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Lauer uh, was on the assembly floor, and he couldn't get away because there was a vote, so he invited us to come right down there, and we got to actually see at the back of the assembly floor. It's very interesting, and if anybody gets a suggestion, to not only to our students, but to community members, if you get an, if you get an opportunity to see how legislation is actually done, it's very interesting. Mrs. Kelly, yes. thank God that we had a guide, because otherwise, at least I would have got lost there. Oh, well, definitely. They, they ushered us to and from, and we were elevators and stairs and running down corridors and uh, it, 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 I think we should have worn our track shoes, shouldn't we? <laughs> All right. Um, also, uh, with the National Honor Society of John Jay with all the in inductees, the Strategic Planning Committee and the, uh, um, the uh, Curriculum Committee also, thank you. And uh, the Art in the Park, which is just wonderful. I spent at least four hours there. And uh, just seeing what the students do uh, from the kindergartners to the 12th graders, uh, it's so creative. And to see what our art teachers do with even with the little children and how they inspire them to do uh, such wonderful work and how much they learn from it. And the uh, posters explaining the the, uh, the motivation, the what they learned about famous artists or illustrators, the different techniques they used, and it was, it's really very interesting. And uh, I also had the pleasure of attending Kim Catalano's retirement dinner. Not that it's a pleasure that she's retiring, but we all had a lot of fun. And she's, uh, like we found out that her ambition had really been to be a dancer, and she still dances better than anyone there. You should have seen her do the twist in the limbo. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so there is life after retirement. So, uh, and I understand she was actually a rodeo clown for years. Isn't that interesting? Well, things we learn about our colleagues, right? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Cariona and I and uh, the district, uh, the high school principals had the great pleasure of attending the National Honor, uh, the National Honor, uh, well, it's actually the Duchess Honor Breakfast, uh, honoring our valedictorians and salutatorians, and then the dinner down in Tarrytown, also honoring them. And uh, I want to make sure I have the names correct because I don't think this was actually accurate. The six students. It's <laughs> yes, uh, you have them because it looked to me like uh, the ones for John Jay and Orchard really got mixed up. So, <laughs> so do you have the exact list? Amy Zhao. Yes, Amy Zhao. I and have her. She Tandy, was. They're from John Jay. Yes, as I well have as that. Krina and Eileen are from Royce Ketchup. Right. And Todd and. Melody are from Orchard View Elementary, Orchard View Alternative High School. Right, yes, that was where this was, yes, what happened here. Okay, I was pretty sure it wasn't what I had seen. All right, and also when at the dinner, Amy Sue was uh, awarded a corporate scholarship in addition, uh, the only student from Duchess, so that was very nice. And best of luck to them. And the engineering award. award, so that's very good. Thank you very much. Oh, and I was there for the district results, and it's, uh, it's, we're very sorry to be losing Mr. Galetta and Mrs. Goodman because they've been wonderful board members for, uh, with plenty of good ideas and very faithful attenders of both board meetings and committee me uh, meetings. But uh, Mr. Slowshower, who is also a very good board member, is continuing, and we have two new board members, uh, Mrs. Johnson and Mr. Lopez, who. Uh, 
I know from their attendance at board meetings in recent months and Mr. Johnson's involvement in committee meetings that they also are going to be fine additions to the board. So congratulations to everyone who won and uh, the people who left. We hope to see you around on committees or at board meetings. Thank you. I just want to thing. I would also like to thank the community for uh, having enough faith in us to pass our budgets and our uh, propositions. Yes. Thank you to everyone who voted. That's what makes uh, that's what makes America great. Really, it's our democracy and people participating. At the state uh, state uh, convention for uh, the New York State School Boards Association, we had a keynote speaker who spoke to that point. And he's, he came from Switzerland originally, and he said, school boards, he said, that's one of the wonderful things about the United States. He said, you have to convince the whole community that you have a good plan. And that's true, and that's good. It, sometimes it may seem like more work, but it's much better. All right, four point zero three committee reports and board representatives. Capital improvement chaired by Mr. Lumia. I'm going to be talking about two committees, so please don't be bored. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'd like to thank the attendees, Mr. Bros, Marie Johnson, who has been very faithfully coming to every meeting. Peggy Kellen, Jan Oppenheim, Robert Rubin, Elise Scholes, Avery Sloshauer, Anthony St. George, and Bill Zemke. Uh, Regarding the 2016-26 million capital project, phase one, Tilton is still on track to replace the defective sidewalks at Evans, Gayhead, Kidney Road, Bessa Road, when summer break begins. Regarding the phase two project, there, there, are, there was an only official meeting on April 24th to finalize equipment locations. The work that was done during spring break for phase two. At John Jay High School recording room, additional work was done in all new elevator shafts at Gayhead, Evans, uh, Myers and Marcus Jr. on special removal in the high school auditorium ceiling. <coughs> the auditorium stage lighting proposal came back from the electrician 78,000 less due to the value engineering. This new proposal falls within the scope. Ron Beck Architect is working every day to make sure that they are being as efficient as possible. The district lighting and stage consultant Michael O'Connor is now working on coordinating the installation of the equipment at the two high schools. Regarding the 30, 33 million 2018 project, uh, the roof and windows during the spring break. The roofing contractor mobilized roof materials at Fiscal Plains Elementary in preparation to begin work, beginning as soon as possible during, uh, during the good summer. The window contract will start at Brinkhoff and Sheaf Road Elementary School this summer and will then go to Cahan Elementary. They have to do window delivery dates as of yet. Uh, regarding the H HVAC project, it's a long list, there's a real couple things. Each week work for Myers, KMJ, and Royce Ketchum are in construction document phase. The cost estimates numbers are came a little high, so they decided to, to do a change of design. Ron Beck gave permission on the administration space that are going to be air conditioned. They're now reviewing the space to conform that they make sense for the educational program. This design should be completed in July 2019, submitted to New York State Education Department. It will be approximately three months with an expedited review and 10 months without one. Regarding the school's bond act, the vestibules, the security vestibule project began during spring break. Some of the structural framing above the ceiling that will support the inside walls was installed. DBC construction to help build new steps at Orson Ketchum High School. In the main entrance, a special removal were done at Fiscal Plains, the John Jay Lobby, and the Fiscal Elementary Roof. Uh, thanks to, uh, to the architects that contributed the memorial plaque. Mr. Rubin has been after uh, to, to get memorial plaques. Doing the, doing the meeting, I embarrassed the architects to make sure that they gave us the money for those plaques and they contributed the money for those particular plaques and they will be installed as soon as possible. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Rubin, for taking the initiative to get Thanks those plaques. Thanks for the entire board. <laughs> uh, that's about it for capital projects. Now comes the next thing, which is. Oh, Mr. Lumia. Mr. Lumia. I just say that I, at the at the uh, Memorial Day ceremony at, uh, at RCK, I had the opportunity beforehand to just take a look at the uh, lighting on that pathway to the fields now. Mm -hmm. Really nice. I don't know if it works yet, but it's really nice looking light. Yes. Oh, I also attended the wellness committee meeting and the curriculum committee meeting. Uh, yesterday I had six meetings, so uh, it was very, <laughs> I left out a couple, I'm sorry. 
All right, uh, curriculum committee chaired by Dr. Cardwell and Mr. Lillian. Uh, it'll be our fourth curriculum meeting. This, this meeting just addresses how, how can the district support K-12 ELA. The teachers gave a positive feedback for the cases curriculum for ELA and the literacy standards across all content areas as well as the vertical alignment that exists. The teachers college affiliation is very important and hope that this problem can be extended to all the schools. The teachers at both the elementary and high school field there's a need for having developmental specialists at every school. Right now we have one person and they feel it's not enough. And so they wish that the money was available to get more developmental specialists at both the elementary as well as the high school. Teachers are concerned that students are not spending enough time on independent reading and know that the amount of reading significantly drops off at the sixth grade, which has a negative impact on their success. The standard is essential for parents to encourage and discuss the importance of reading with their children. Although class sizes under the superintendent has decreased at some levels, every effort must be made to reduce class size even more at all levels. Although teachers see value in the standards, they simply do not have enough time to cover the standards in the manner required. The amount of planning time needed to meet all the student need is astronomical. The question as to whether the state stands the range appropriate for special education students was asked Hopefully, more comprehensive answers will be brought forth at the next curriculum meeting, where the majority of will be special education teachers. However, some comments were made. Uh, programs need to be evaluated for better to meet the standards of, student, of specialized students. They stated that it's critical that students are placed <coughs> in programs which will meet all their needs. Last but not least, last day teacher expressed a lack of consistency across all the schools as it pertains to self-contained and inclusion programs. At the next meeting, hopefully, Dr. Carwell will add to, to all the comments that I just made. That's it for the time. Thank you. Policy Committee, chaired by Mr. Rubin. I'd like to, first off, thank all the members of the Policy Committee for uh, being very good, very active participants over this past year. Uh, one of whom is now going to be on the board next year at least. Uh, this has been, I think this has been a very <coughs> productive uh, committee uh, that we've gone through. You've seen the results uh, we voted on over these past uh, several number of months, with some of which we're going to be voting on tonight, uh, one way or the other. I do have to meet with Mrs. Pedro to talk about, I, want, I would like to just talk about setting up one more meeting. Slash hour, you had made a recommendation that, of course, we're going to talk about at that meeting as well. And my, I hope we're going to talk about that. Uh, and it's just been a productive year. Thank you to everybody who's been involved. Strategic planning, Mr. Carrion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, strategic planning, we met May 9th, and as indicated by board members sitting on the dais. Um, we had our first meeting and we are scheduled to have two additional meetings. Um, the emails, the invitations went out to the committee members. At this uh, meeting, we even had a presentation um, from our board president who actually turned keys. So the taxpayer's money from the Wallaces community is at work where she turned key the information of different models um, that she had saw and witnessed at uh, the NISPA presentations and it was very good because the work that we're doing now and what was brought to the administration is that we can do this work and we're not spending sixty, seventy thousand dollars as we know that these type of companies can cost a district and we're facilitating the work and we're being extremely um, inclusive and collaborative with this work and I thank the board members that are part of it and the first part that we did was review our present mission statement, our core values, and it was reached that there's no reason to change our mission statement, our core values, and that we should continue on with the work that we're doing, but really think about our strategic objectives and where we are with our strategic objectives and then with our action plan and our measurable goals. And really, the one thing that will make quite a few of the board, or I think most Board of Education members, that our goal is to keep it simple, 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 and really bring out the objectives and that can be measured and that can actually be monitored as we are planning and looking at the representation to these core values. So at our next meeting, 
our goal is to reach our strategic objectives and uh, and I was like <laughs> Time's up. Time's up. But I was. <laughs> you may have another minute if you like. I, 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 I got it all. Okay. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> Wellness Committee, chaired by Ms. Crandall. Good evening. Uh, on the morning of Wednesday um, of this week, which was May 23rd, and why we scheduled it for the morning after the budget vote, I really am not quite certain, but we did. We had our final meeting of the district's wellness committee. Um, one of our committee members had made the suggestion that we have the meeting actually at the RCK cafeteria, so we did. We had our meeting there. Uh, we had just a few members in attendance, so we did not have a quorum. However, we did have discussion. There was no actionable items that needed to be addressed at that meeting. We did have discussion on the surveys that went out to students and community members. Uh, we had two email requests from community members regarding alternative seating, which we discussed briefly, and also whether or not the survey re results would be posted. Um, after a discussion with the committee, we made the decision that the survey results were so small in comparison to the whole sample. For example, we have approximately 5,418 seventh through 12th graders, and we had 99 students respond. We didn't feel that we had a representative sample, but we will provide that information and post something on the wellness's website as to what the committee's decision was with regard to the survey. This was our final meeting, and I just wanted to thank the Board of Education members who were a part, as well as the other members of the committee. We had a great year, and I look forward to next year. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Dr. County Fosies, Mr. Rubin. Oh. I'm hoping, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, Dr. Scanning Bosies uh, had the opportunity to go there, uh, and their audit committee, as well as the Bosies, the audit committee basically showed there were no, uh, nothing major or actionable there, and Bosies were compliant, and we are doing, uh, plus the Bosies is doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, legally and fiscally. And uh, there was nothing really to report, no, nothing, no major items on the agenda that the BOSI did for the regular board meeting. Dutchess County School Boards Association meeting on May 2nd. Uh, that happened to conflict with the National Honor Society inductions at R.C. Ketchum. And uh, all of us board members who were able to uh, free that evening uh, decided it was more important to attend uh, Ketchum for our students. And therefore, I was not, neither I nor any other board members were at the May 2nd meeting. And therefore, I will give a combined report in June after I get the minutes from that meeting that I did not, was not able to attend. Mrs. Kelly? Mr. Rubin. I just would like to say something that when you and I attended the uh, NISBA uh, uh, up in Albany, the thing in Albany, that we attended because we had gotten a request from uh, the Dutchess County School Boards Association that attendance was very light. And it was very light, even when we were up there. So we, were, we went up there representing the district and school boards in general in this county. But I would have to say that there were the two of us and what, there were maybe 10 people in that whole meeting there. Yeah, from um, the entire state. And uh, from board. the entire state. So we took it seriously in terms of going up there to advocate on behalf of the best interests of this district. Uh, and I'd like the community to know that. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have, uh, that's the only meeting this uh, this entire year that there was no one there from Wabinger's. And you can't say that about <laughs> all of the, uh, by any means, of the school boards in Dutchess County. 5.01, superintendent's report. Turn this one back on so the Zoom may have to turn theirs off. Good evening, Madam President, Board of Education. Um, I'd like to first begin by um, thanking, um, well, first welcoming uh, Marie Johnson and Mr. Lopez into the Board of Education and 
definitely we're looking forward to working with you and really looking forward to Eddie with another three years. And I just have to say that the Eddie's, no, Eddie's true advocacy for really trying to work with the municipalities has really paid off in the 2018-19 school year. And I look forward to the continued work that this has created because it's not talking about just economic development but also everything that we can do for our students and taking advantage of so many opportunities. So it's really opened a lot of doors, which I did not anticipate seeing. Thank you. And I think it's, it's you know, for a long time, your advocacy for this type of um, process implementation, and I think this was the best way to do it, the, what, what we have going. So um, I look forward to the next three years and that continued work um, that we do with the entire Wappingers community. So um, maybe we can do a presentation on that too, <laughs> just to really show how all of these nine municipalities or the municipalities that show up, the work and the collaboration and how we, we, we make this really interconnected this work. So um, without taking, uh, I was gonna talk about our Val Sals. As I mentioned, we have um, six students that are extremely proud, they're great. Um, they have great sense of humor as we spent pretty much a good part of the day with them. As I said before, Amy and Tomby from John Jay, Karina, um, who's the salutatorian, and Eileen, the valedictorian at Royce Ketchum, as well as Todd and Melody from Orchard View High School. They are uh, valedictorians and our salutatorians. And from there, I'm gonna congratulate them and then segue into the fact that the fact that we've had horrible weather for the last three years, I believe, Mr. Mm -hmm. Lumia, right? For Arts in the Park. Mm -hmm. When I got there, I realized the level of work that goes into it, but more so, as I was driving home, I was really thinking about the incredible artwork, as Trustee Odom did mention. And then I got thinking about the theater, the fine and performing arts, and the productions that we have. And then I got thinking about the actual orchestras and bands and the competitions that we went. So I want to make it public to say that one of my goals is to also see how we can create a level of excellence and recognition, not just for our academic scholars, but also for our students, and not just really being explosive about sports, and um, but really also being explosive about those particular students and what they do and what they contribute to our society in terms of really being becoming inclusive through the work of art through the work of music so as I was driving home I had a friend a colleague from New York City who was an administrator and I couldn't stop bragging because he's a principal in a very good elite school in New York but I was like my students are much better than yours <laughs> and I couldn't I really couldn't stop thinking about how energetic that artwork made me feel and the musicians who performed and then got, like I said, just took me to the entire global perspective of defining performing arts and it's time that Wappingers, that we really, really kind of open our eyes to really create some type of level of excellence where we recognize those students for what they do and what they bring to the community and how they bring people together. Um, so that is, as we say in the mission, that is a passion of mine for the 1920 school year. I'm seeing how we can make this happen. And I'm sure we'll get the full support of the Board of Education. Um, in addition to that, um, just, just record one. that there. What? That's all. What's in the notes? Yeah. On the agenda, disregard what's on the agenda. Oh, I was. Okay. No, I was just going to. Oh, I lost my flow there, Mr. Pedro. Mr. Carrion. I just want to know, Mr. Lumias, Mr. Lumia has been saying for however how long the quality of the performances of the uh, Mrs. Keller, the quality of the performances that we go. We've been talking to you about this. We we hope you know when we see this from time to time, we go to these plays. It, it's really you talk about a Broadway quality, especially in the high schools. So. You know, but we, to do more, you're right. Best bang for the buck. Yes. Sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, yes, I to totally endorse it. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, we had high school letters, not just for sports, but for uh, the arts. 
and I earned mine in dramatics, and we also had, besides the sports banquet, we had the arts banquet. Um, and I think that, you know, that would be very nice if we could do something similar. Um, with with um, the arts in the park, uh, the arts in the park, um, just want to really give a special shout out to the music teachers, but especially to the art teachers. When you walk at that park and you see the work that it entails um, to really um, showcase what our students are doing, it's it's incredible. It's it's something that I just want to take on the road and share with other school districts something that they should be doing because um, we should be very proud and we should be very proud of our art teachers who really I think are up at the crack of dawn the night before and then have to close down that entire park so they are to be extremely commended for what they do and lastly uh, do we have any seniors here for signatures and if we do um, make sure you get your signature if you haven't yet but you're one month away. If you're attending the prom, you're um, a week away from John Jay, I believe, and you're a couple weeks away from Royce Ketchum, and we wanna wish you the best, and we can't wait for you to walk on that stage and be able to shake your hand and congratulate you as you enter the next chapter of your life. Thank you. <coughs> that she provides all of the workers that work on that day and prior to and making sure that the administration works, wears yellow or what the color is going to be of the ballot that day. And um, so I really think that she really deserves to be recognized and, um, and know that we have a great person that takes care of this entire community from the board perspective and the administrative perspective. So thank you, Ms. Clark. And she has got a vote. She has got a vote. She has got a vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. She makes all our lives so much easier. 7.01 School Lunch Fund Presentation. Ms. Flesher and Ms. Crumlin. Hello. Hello. Not working. Person. Uh, there we go. Now. Matthew Flusser, school lunch director. I'm going to make this quick. Nice quick presentation. Um, the services that we are currently providing, the most important being that everything is compliant. All the meals, breakfast, and lunch a la carte. Everything is uh, meeting all the codes. Um, we 
to do uh, a good amount of catering in the district, and hopefully uh, uh, the Fair Trade Green Mountain Coffee is a hit. Um, we're always trying to increase participation. Um, breakfast is a big, important uh, place that we want to increase participation, not only for this uh, school um, food service, but the, the students' well-being. <laughs> um, our salad options have been very popular, K through 12, at Fishville Plains. They have a thing going where he does about 25 salads a day for the students, so they're enjoying that option. The Boar's Head uh, Deli uh, products that we brought in this year were a big hit <coughs> K through 12, and um, we're gonna continue that uh, in the upcoming year. Challenges of our food service, there are many. Um, wellness regulations and customer satisfaction is always a balancing game. Um, balancing labor with participation is another big one. And of course the saga, the saga of replacing uh, the aging equipment is uh, ongoing and we've made uh, small steps in that uh, regard. Um, we do have new equipment that we've trickled in this year, so um, throughout the district, between purchasing um, items and grant awards and um, um, vendor um, points, we've done a pretty good job. We've won a couple of contests uh, to get a few pieces of equipment, and we're hoping that uh, in the future we can continue this trend to try to get ourselves back uh, up to date. Um, up here we have a comparison of our meal prices uh, over the last few years. Um, and we are um, suggesting, proposing a small increase uh, at breakfast uh, compared to the other regions. Um, and um, a small increase uh, due to um, mandates of the state. We have a comparison of what the current prices are in our region. Um, we uh, will stay competitive with the increase of breakfast already. And these are, as I say, current. Other districts might be doing a small increase also. Um, and these things, as I say, are based on uh, what's happening in the region, as well as um, the mandate of the, of the state. We got our financial summary here. And um, we've uh, projecting uh, pretty good this year. Last year, not so well, but um, we have a nice balanced budget for you. We've got a nice zero, so nice and balanced for going forward. <coughs> Many future plans. We're uh, trying to expand the uh, vegetarian healthy options. Obviously, that is uh, something that the, our requests um, uh, through um, uh, students, and we're going to really make strides in that area. Um, we're also going to be trying to purchase as much New York goods as possible. One, because we love New York, and two, because when we reach a threshold, we would get more subsidy from the government um, by purchasing New York goods. Um, we're planning to use some of the fund balance, hopefully, to replace equipment, especially some of our aging dishwashers in the district that unusually are the ones that were from the 50s when they were built. I think they built them around the dishwashers. <laughs> um, and obviously we're going to continue uh, trying to get as much local produce as possible. And that this year was a good, um, we, we did good. And uh, working with the Poughkeepsie Farm Project uh, was a fun year. And so we're gonna continue that. I thank you for your support. These are some pictures of uh, some of the gay head chef of the day that, uh, from the kindergarten class. That was a lot of fun. The kids had a great day. So now, if there's any questions. Okay, do we have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Slavshauer. I think you made some great strides from last year's presentation to this year's presentation. So I want to commend you and the entire staff. Um, kind of, you know, 
slowly but surely turning things around into, into a positive way. Uh, two quick, well, question, comment. Uh, Sabellico's in across the street from, from Van White, they've expanded, they received permits, they acquired some additional acreage and are doing more, uh, not just flowers and, and brush, but more fresh vegetables and growing. Um, I don't know if you have any contact with them, but it might be a possibility to talk to them, again, for shopping local and getting local produce um, right down the road. So that might be beneficial, maybe to work something out with them as they've expanded their farm. Um, so that could be a good thing for the, for the district as well. Um, uh, Mr. Slowshower, just to advise, we do advertise our bids locally as well, you know, as, as, so we hit the local as well. So okay. hopefully they will respond. We can't reach out to them directly, but um, hopefully they will respond as well. Okay. You may get a phone call. That's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say no. Just, just saying. I don't, know. I don't know for sure. Just saying. Um, more comment observation. Uh, obviously the uh, Boar's Head product line has been extremely successful as you mentioned and um, obviously talking with the kids, they, they enjoy it. I just have a question just on the procedure and the, how that works. Um, because I've gotten some information from, from the kids that we seem to run out of sandwiches by the time we get to the last lunch, which is seventh period at, at junior high. Um, are we making, do we have enough supply on a daily basis? What is the process? Because I think we're losing the opportunity to sell more of that particular product because there's ham, but there's no turkey, or there's turkey, but yet there's no ham. And the kids aren't buying anything. And obviously, they're looking forward and because their schedule is they have a seventh period lunch. They get there, and there isn't enough sandwiches. So I don't. It, it, have you come across that at all, or is it just more isolated? It's just the kids complaining. Um, and I did attend. I was at junior high, junior high uh, this past year, and went to seventh period lunch. There wasn't any. You know, it was like one choice of sandwiches that were left. That's so. because they didn't want to give you anything. That would be Van no, White? It was not Van White. It was uh, yeah. Wap, Wap, Wap Junior. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just think, yeah. yeah. We don't I mean, care I, about it, we don't know. So okay, it, it's, it's a personal observation, but, uh, and then just hearing from students at, at Van White. I mean, French fries are a hit too, they're, they're good, but sometimes, you know, get there at noon for a sandwich and there's no sandwich. So, it's good to know. Um, I just, whatever the process is, maybe we can just look into that. Um, obviously, we don't want the sandwiches made and then wasted, but you know, I know it might be difficult to replenish right away in between periods. But maybe something could be done because I, I think it's such a hit, and you know, 10, 12 sandwiches on a daily basis that we may not be selling can it obviously adds up and can be significant over the course of the entire school year. So just, just a tidbit. That no, my goal would be to have sandwiches for all. <laughs> except yeah. except late on Friday. <laughs> okay, I think Mr. Rubin and Mr. Odoms and Mr. Lillard. Mr. Rubin. Madam President, thank you. Uh, Mr. Slash, are you ever considered they hate everything because they don't want you coming back? Uh, I just thought, uh, maybe you could just tell me a little bit. I'm not quite sure what you mean when you say buy locally, you buy, buy New York State. Because as an example, if you buy bread, bread might be made from it may be baked locally, but it may, the grains may come, I don't know, from out in the Midwest somewhere. So I'm really not sure you're talking about produce, meat, uh, dairy, or just everything. Uh, Mr. Cuomo has said 51% of the product has to come from New York for it to count. So if it's a bread item, 51% would have okay. to be. So any, any product that is food uh, from New York. Thank you. And of course, those items are more expensive. <clears throat> so that's the other offsetting. It's great to have that opportunity, but the increase in price for those items don't necessarily match the subsidies, so what is then the sense of, of doing that? So it's still a balancing act, as Mr. Plus has indicated. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Adams. Thank you. It's good to hear you have a new clientele. Your students uh, have a, a healthier way of eating, some may say. You said, yeah, I mentioned an uh, uh, increase of uh, vegetarian options. Is there any particular school or any particular meals that you have, an, have as an option for those vegetarians? Well, the basic plan would be to um, 
give vegetarian options on the days, like if they're serving a, a chicken item, have a vegetarian option. Breakfast at the lunch, uh, we would try to have the vegetarian sausage option along with the veggie burger and um, veggie chicken nuggets. So those things that, um, those are the first step. Uh, vegetable, um, vegetarian wrap of the week maybe, those kind of options, you know, maybe the, the hummus and vegetables, the mozzarella, those kind of uh, options. We will still be looking into other items because they have to be on demand. So like we're not gonna make it just to get rid of it. Just like how the salad program works, they order them. So even at the K through six at Fishkill Plains, they are able, 25 students are able to order the salad that they want. So if they want the vegetarian items, it's gonna have to be ordered at this point until it becomes so popular, then we would be able to make an appointment. So you have particular students in mind that would like to, they have to place the order, but you know particular locations, which schools and which All, all schools, K-12. K and um, it comes from the heart because uh, my kids are always vegetarian, so I knew that they missed out on some of the school lunch, so uh, we'll see. It can't please everybody, but we're gonna try to please a few more people. It's hard because those kids would have to bring their own lunch to school and my son, for um, K through 12, ate a cold uh, chicken patty, vegetarian chicken patty sandwich the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lumia. First of all, I'd like to thank you and your staff for the work you do. It's extremely important for the community as well as the board to, rec to realize that that program <coughs> is totally funded by what they sales. We don't contribute one cent to their budget. So any new equipment <laughs> that has to be bought has to come from the money that they they, they, they sell. So I'd like to thank you and the, your staff, extremely hard working people. So thank you very much. Thank you. And that's by law. The school board can't add money to the budget. The school lunch program has to be self supporting. And how Mr. Flusher does it, I don't know, but it's wonderful that he does it. Thank you. Okay. This is good. I just want to thank you because you juggle so many balls in the air to come up with a quality program. And I am sure you meet with lots of ingratitude from the kids. How's the food at your school? Sucks! But, but thank you for the work that you're doing. It's very impressive. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? 7.02, approval of the 2019-2020 school lunch fund budget. <laughs> okay. Resolved that the Board of Education of the Wabash Center School District does hereby approve participation in the National School Lunch Program to accept the policy statement and the unauthorized the President of the Board of Education to sign a certificate of acceptance and the Federal Resolve Board of Education of the Wabash Central School District does hereby adopt the full service budget for the 2019-2020 school year as presented to the Board of Education and as recommended by the Superintendent of Schools. Okay, we have a motion. Mr. Rubin, second. Mrs. Goodman, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. 7.03, approval to adopt the 2019-2020 Code of Conduct. Before, before we get started, if I can just share, um, I asked our I asked our district clerk, and I know you all did your homework, but I asked her to just go through the process that we will take today and the steps so that we can really get through the code of conduct. Ms. Patrick, if you can just use the microphone and really get um, say. Exactly. Point of, point of order. This stops. With all due respect, I think that should be part of the discussion. That, that no, no, I'm not. I, and I think we should talk about that. Okay. That's just my point. Of, uh, point. I, this is just procedure. No, it's just procedure. I understand. Yeah. Parliamentary procedure. I understand. Okay. Please. Okay. Okay. Can you just explain how we're going about it? It's not discussing the issue, but how? Right. That's exactly it. Okay, 
Okay, so I, I set this up with several motions. So the first motion, um, you would deal with intentional fault allegations section of the code of conduct. So the board, if it- On page 12. Right, <coughs> you would make a motion to approve a revision and um, the language quoted there was a suggestion by a board member and um, then you would need a second and then discuss that particular motion and get a vote on it. Then move on to the second one, which would deal with the cell phones and electronic devices section of the code of conduct. There would be a motion to replace a certain section. You would refer to this document that's highlighted with the yellow and green that has section one, two, and three. Select one of those sections when you read the motion and then begin discussion on it and take a vote on it. And then lastly, you would read the motion, resolve to approve the code of conduct as amended with a motion, a second, further discussion, and final approval. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Final approval. Right. So we're starting the first recommended action is the motion on the uh, revision to the intentional false allegation section. So, Mr. Lumia. Uh, okay, the, uh, the, the session to be replaced with the following. Any intentional false allegation is a serious offense and breach of the code of conduct. In the event that it is determined by the administration that the intentional false allegation has been made, the matter may be subject to disciplinary action. Okay, we need a motion. Mr. Galletta, second. Mr. Odoms, discussion. Mrs. Goodman. I'm looking at the Code of Conduct, page 12. The very top. Right. And it reads, any intentional false allegations or accusation by a student against an employee. I, I'd like to delete the words against an employee. Um, I think any intentional false allegation against anybody is not acceptable. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so, so that you're making an amendment to an amendment. <coughs> is, that, is that what you're requesting? Yes, Oops. I am. Uh, I think well, I the think this is amendments already, amendments there. Uh, amendments here. I, I, th I think uh, in what was just read, and it's on the, on this page, in your, it's in. Yeah, I'm reading it. I, it no. I just got to turn it off when you're not using it. I'm sorry. Uh, not in the code of conduct itself, but in the motion that was just read. Uh, in your agenda, 7.03, the first motion. The, yes. It's saying exactly what I think what you're saying. Right. The amendment, you, okay. the amendment was read the originally. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that's all that matters. I just wasn't following the directions. Okay. But the outcome is perfect. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Fine. Any other comments or discussion? Mr. Galletta, did you have something? Okay. Anyone? No, thank you. Okay. Well, I, I'd like to make a comment. All right, Mr. Lumia. I think that the false allegation statement that is presently in the court of conduct should stay as it is. And I'm going to read it. Any intentional false allegation or accusation by a student against an employee that has the potential to jeopardize the individual reputation, education, employment, and professional certification is a serious offense and a breach of the code of conduct. In the event that it has been determined that by the administrator that a false allegation has been made in regards to the interaction staff member, the matter will be immediately referred to the superintendent hearing to accordance with the provision section 32 to 14 of the education law. To me, this is extremely important to have. I've seen false allegations against teachers made which proved to be false and the allegation against that teacher and the teacher was destroyed basically came to the point where he had resigned oh, even though the allegations were proved to be false so i think it's extremely important that any false allegation against staff members is taken very serious and should be dealt accordingly the, what that what the new what the this was states very simple i mean to me it says the new uh, the new wording 
In the event that it has been determined by the administrator that intentional false allegations have been made, the matter may be subject to disciplinary act, may be subject, it should be subject to disciplinary action. I mean, we can, we got to take these allegations seriously. And I think student to student, I think that's addressed in a different place, but this is very strong when it comes to student to staff. To me, I, I, I've seen a reputation destroyed because of false allegations by students. And that makes me very serious. So uh, I think it should stand as it is. And as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 new, the, uh, the, the, the new wording, I do not accept. So, uh, Mr. Glenn. So the revision that was read, the amendment that we are having a discussion on right now, uh, covers Mr. Lumia's concern. Um, my concern with the section in the Code of Conduct as it reads right now, student against employee, to me, that's um, an unnecessarily, that's an unnecessary slight against students. It kind of implies that 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 stu students would be the only ones that, that would possibly make a false allegation against somebody. And, and I think there's no reason whatsoever to single students out in this in this section. Um, anybody is capable of making an intentional false allegation. Um, I know there's been discussion that this is a student code of conduct and that it only applies to students. Well then, if that's the case, if you feel strongly about that, then there's no reason to specifically name students in this section if, you, if it's a student code of conduct, because it, it also applies to students. If, on the other hand, that you recognize that this so-called student code of conduct, this 46-page document that does not say student code of conduct, it says code of conduct, but also includes several pages of conduct expectations for school personnel, building administrators, board of education, um, senior administration, school counselors, teachers, visitors, and spectators, as well as a um, compliance employee compliance notification from specifically for employees. All of that is included. Then, clearly, it's not just it's not doesn't just cover students. And I know my friend, Mr. Lumi, has mentioned that some of those, um, <coughs> conduct expectations that are outlined are referred to as roles. That's the roles of those, of those people. There's a very fuzzy and gray line between the role that someone has and the conduct that is expected of them in, in terms of how they perform those roles. And, and this code of conduct crosses those lines all over the place. So in, in my opinion, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to specifically single out students for this type of behavior when anybody is capable of performing it. And at the same time, if it is a student, it covers your concern, Mr. Lumia. If, if a student makes an intentional false allegation, as, as, you, as you have pointed out, is a possibility, um, it, it, they're subject to disciplinary action. So to me, it's an unnecessary slight but direct, uh, directly at students that I personally cannot support. Mrs. Goodman. I would, is it on? Yes, okay. Um, actually, the slight against students that I see is at, the, uh, is at the receiving end, not necessarily the perpetrator. Because quite frankly, um, intentional, in, in, intentionally inaccurate accusations against from student against student can be as damaging, if not more so. We've had there have been instances nationwide of um, issues of suicide. I know personally of students who have had to change schools because of false allegations by classmates. Um, it's a specific kind of bullying that I think needs a specific kind of address. And I think the language as currently proposed in the amendment of any kind of intentional false allegation, regardless of who's doing it, regardless of who's the recipient, more than covers the seriousness of the events. Anyone else? Mr. 
Mr. Rubin. I have to say that I have to agree uh, in large part with Ms. Volumia. My big hang up on this motion that's made right now is when it says the matter may. May is very, it's, it's just too vague a phrase. It will be. Either it is or it's not. If, it's, if we find an infraction, then we take steps. Not may take steps. That, but for the most part, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rubin, would you like to make an amendment and change may to change will to be? be. No. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. I'd like to call the question if possible. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any more? All right. You need a second to call we the question. What, what did you do? I called the question. question. Oh, fine. Then I'll okay. second that. Second. Okay. All right. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment as recommended uh, in the agenda, <coughs> the recommended action, the amendment that would change the current code of conduct. All those in favor? Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Slowshower, uh, uh, Mrs. Rappaport, uh, is your hand up or down? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Okay, then maybe we need more discussion. No, he called the motion. There's no discussion. Okay, well, okay. Um, Do I? I'm confused as to which one is. The amendment and which the one? The amendment is the one to put Mr. Galetta. And the agenda. And the agenda. So are we voting to approve that amendment? That's correct. Okay. Fine. But if we want to change the wording, this would have to be voted down, and then we'd have to change it. Uh, excuse me for not mm -hmm. being right, recognized. Right. I apologize. Yeah. If we wanted to change the word may to will be or something to that effect, we would have to vote this down, then a motion to, to amend to change the work, that particular word, and then we vote on that again. Or, so vote on the other right, second. I understand that. Or okay. this. Okay. All right. Uh, then we will we'll vote that. Have to vote again. Yes. All right. All right. All those in favor of, and I think maybe perhaps I'll just read it again so we all know exactly what we're voting on, to uh, approve a revision to the intentional false allegations section of the 2019-2020 Code of Conduct and that the section be replaced with the following words. Any intentional false allegation is a serious offense and a breach of the code of conduct in the event that it has been determined by administration that an intentionally false allegation has been made, the matter may be subject to disciplinary action. All those in favor? Mr. Odoms, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Goodman, those opposed? Mr. Rubin, Mr. Slowshower, Mr. Lumia, Ms. Rappaport, Mrs. Kellen. Okay, it was defeated. Okay, at this point, since it was defeated, if somebody would like to change the wording. I'd like to make a motion. Okay, I, it, it, it's, yeah. Annie, okay. why don't you bring that up Mr. at the end? Mr. Sotomayor, sorry, Mr. Sotomayor. Oh, did you want to do the others first? I'm going to do the first. All right. Well, let's just yeah. get right. one at a time. I would rather vote on this first. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to change the word "may" to "will," be subject to disciplinary action. Okay. <coughs> I will second that. Okay, a second. Okay. So, in other words, we're now voting on it with instead of the word "may" with the words "will." All right. All right. Okay, we're now voting on a different amendment, which reads, any intentional false allegation is a serious offense and a breach of the code of conduct. In the event that it has been determined by administration that an intentionally false allegation has been made, the matter will be subject to disciplinary action. Okay, all those in favor. Ms. Rappaport, Mr. Rodents, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mr. Rubin, Ms. Goodman, Mr. Slowshower, Mrs. Kellett. Opposed? Mr. Lewis. Okay, the motion carries. Okay. Uh, next, the motion to approve. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Sosha, seconded. How many in favor? Unanimous. 
Okay, we have 10 more minutes. Mr. Lumia. I think it's important to realize what the next motion is with, deal with. <laughs> there are currently three uh, three documents of the relativity called the cell phone policy. The one that's there now, the proposed new language as, as suggested by the uh, policy committee, and last but not least, the third motion, which is uh, the amended new language, incorporating feedback from the uh, COC committee and our building <coughs> principles to the policy committee proposed language. So, uh, so that there are three different policies. Personally, my comments are, if I can make that comment, number three, section three, policy number two, option number three is the best of all, it incorporates all the policies. <coughs> so I assume everybody's read those three possibilities. I sincerely hope that uh, we can just move on and just vote on the uh, motion three. Yeah, I, I still yeah. will, only need to read it though, don't I, I'll read it. Good. We resolve the Board of Education adopt uh, motion, to approve, okay, a motion to approve the revision of the cell phone policy and electronic devices session of, of 2019-2024 conduct and the session be replaced with the attached section number three <coughs> as stated. Somebody have a second? Do I read that to the no, second? Read read the words? Oh, it's up to you. I don't, I'll think, I don't think that's necessary. Okay, uh, Mr. Rubin seconded. Uh, all right, uh, discussion. <coughs> Ms. Goodman. Two objections. Which one? Three? Yeah, two objections. Three. Three. Um, and this is actually in all the other versions as well. Um, I've raised the objections before in policy committee. Um, it says such devices in the, th in, the, in the third paragraph, in the first line under the red cross out, it says such devices must be turned off. That's unenforceable. And I think, you know, if you want them stored out of sight, fine, store them out of sight. But what are you going to do? Ask a, you know, ask a student to pull out the cell phone and assume the turn, make sure that it's turned off. I think putting in unenforceable disciplinary action is, is just an error because it weakens discipline all throughout. My larger objection in terms of unenforceable in emergency situations, except, exceptions to the prohibited use of cell phones, pagers, and two-way communication systems will be, form, will be permitted for the students to contact school officials or 911. 911. Also unenforceable. And it places a terrible load on the teacher. Because, quite frankly, you, you want the teacher keeping the students safe, not worrying about who they're texting, especially if they're going to be texting their parents because they're scared or because they want to say they love them, both of which have been recorded in school shootings. I think that eliminating that, limiting that language to contact school officials or 911, 911, uh, I think it's a terrible burden on teachers. And it adds a stressor that shouldn't be there. Because it's the teacher, of course, who's going to be held responsible. Granted, students have also been known to spread rumors, <coughs> and that can make matters worse. Understood. But I think the risk the safety risk of having teachers in force in a time of emergency who the students are texting far outweighs the safety risk of whatever rumors the students bounce back and forth. Any other comments, questions? Ms. Rappaport. You know, I think that you can say such devices must be silenced. So if, if it's in the student's pocket and it's silent, you don't know if it's you don't That's know fine. if it's on or off. That's it's fine. Silenced. Yeah. Um, as far as texting goes, I mean, in an emergency situation, sometimes phones make noise when you text. I mean, that becomes a safety issue. You know, particularly if you're in a lockdown and you know you've got lights and sounds coming out of the phone, then you know that. 
then, then that can weigh against yep. Yep. you know the the monitoring of that I mean that's another consideration uh, yes I think also we were told that uh, sometimes uh, the uh, cell system is overloaded and emergency instructions can't get through so I don't know if that's true in this area but I know it's happened in, in some other areas have something to add? Mr. Galatis? Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Odoms, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay. I just don't see how you're going to monitor the use of cell phones in an emergency situation. I mean, if this is an emergency, people are going to use their cell phones. You yeah, ain't stopping right. it. Right. So I don't know how you want to change the wording here, or whatever you want to do, you, you, whether you leave it or you change it, you're not stopping it. Um, yep. So, I mean, not gonna penalize anybody. yeah, no one's going to, you're right, there's not going to be just, you know, there's, right, exactly. What you're then what is it yeah. Wait a minute, Mr. Odoms was for, first, then Mr. Lumia, then Mrs. Goodman has another turn. Yes, Mr. Odoms. I, I, I concur with Trustee Galetta, what he had uh, mentioned, and put uh, Trustee Goodman that was just asking why is it in there, so if you could respond to that. Okay. All right, um, no, first of all, this is the Court of Conduct Committee recommended this particular language, as well as the principals of the schools. And again, in, in emergency situations, kids don't want to be penalized. We should not penalize kids for using a cell phone to determine an emergency. So as far as I'm concerned, that particular paragraph is just, it's, it's just fine. And, uh, uh, and, and, and as far as I could, cell phones have been a problem, even though somebody, we can't, we can't monitor them, Look, we should have a policy, whether we can uh, in, enforce it or not, it should be there. This cell phones should be not used or do it during the school day unless the teacher you, uh, uh, permits them to do it. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, th the way it states, it should be adopted. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'd like to call the question and vote on this particular policy. <coughs> yes, no, no, if I could just say that, something quickly. Wait, yeah, yeah. Discussion's ended. He called the question. No, but why, why, why we did didn't second, second, we didn't second. second. Because he wasn't we, seconded. He, and he, he doesn't did. need to. He calls the question. No, he, no, he needs a second. second for calling the Do question. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Who right. right. seconded? I called the question. Who seconded? I, I will second it. All right, now he is. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, Turn your mic off, please. Oh, that's me. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, it is. Uh, all those in favor of section three uh, of the the third alternative, the one, the amended new language incorporating feedback from policy committee uh, and uh, the code of conduct committee and the building principles. Okay. The joint. Uh, Version. All those in favor? Mr. Rubin and Mr. Lumia, are those opposed? Ms. Good, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Slowshower, Ms. Rappaport, Mr. Odoms, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Kelly. Uh, it's defeated. Uh, Mr. Carrion, did you wish to speak now? Well, yeah, but you can. Well, uh, can we can we ask for the superintendent's uh, input before we adopt a code of conduct? Because we have to then vote on the whole code of conduct. So, did you have something you wanted to say, Mr. Carrion, before we uh, vote on the code of conduct? The the notion of, of cell phones and the um, with no disrespect to anyone, but the conversation that started when I was a principal prior to. Um, becoming even a district office administrator um, and how cell phones are not cell phones anymore in terms of communication. Um, we have all types of communication. We have communication now where people get on Google Docs and open up a Word document and ask people to share and we don't know how students are communicating. I think when, when we, we look at that, that one paragraph about emergency situations and we even went to a presentation about how to respond in an emergency situation, the bottom line is that anything goes. Mm -hmm. And we're also living in a culture where I see it all the time. I see it with people that I'm related to and soon you'll see it possibly with other folks that 
kids call their parents in high school just to say, hey, so-and-so is picking me up. You don't have to come. And that's parents telling them, you, let, you better let me know what's going on after school. And so we're, 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 we're fighting a battle. I'm not opposed to just leaving it without the same concept of what was talked about with the allegations. Do not put parameters to a, an emergency situation. If there's an emergency situation, you're, you're going to react and respond in the way you deem necessary. And um, um, we, we see it all the time. So self systems will be permitted for students to, to make contact if, if it's going to stay on. Because I know at my age, if I'm on a plane or there's somewhere, I may still call my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all the years. <laughs> you know, so I may not be 911 first. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, wait a minute. Before I call on Mrs. Goodman, I would like I would just like to ask Mrs. Pedro for parliamentary procedure here. Okay, is it permitted, Ms. Pedro, when we, since the next motion will be approving the code of conduct, for somebody to raise an amendment to the code of conduct? before we vote on it, incorporating parts of these changes, but not the, uh, but perhaps a slightly it's different You can do it that asked. way, yes, so but you can, can do, do it at this time, because we're right. dealing with the cell phone, <coughs> similar to what we, we did with did before. Big, big <coughs> So you can do that now. Okay, so can someone can make an, uh, a, a mo another motion, another motion to amend. Uh, using some parts of this and not all if they so wish. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Mrs. Goodman. I would like, I would like to promote. Oops. Is that on now? Oh, you can turn your phone now. Okay, sorry. I'd like to to propose an amendment to Section Three, and then we vote as and to re vote on it. Um, in the paragraph starting with the third paragraph, in the fourth line of the paragraph, after the word devices. I'm sorry, after the word B, delete the words turned off and. So we read such devices must be stored out of sight. Or silence. 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 And stored out of sight. Silence. Okay, change turned off to silence. Okay. And then I would like to delete the emergency situations. Paragraph altogether. May I make a recommendation that we just do one one, one at, at a time. time, so okay. that way it's easier. One amendment That's at fine. a time. That's fine. Okay. All right. Do we have a second to the motion to change the word to silence, okay. Mr. Galera? Any further discussion? All those in favor of changing the word to silence? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Did anyone have any other amendments, <clears throat> Mrs. Goodman? I'd like to propose to meeting the next to last paragraph of the section that reads in emergency situations, exceptions to the prohibited use of cell phones, pagers, and two-way communication systems will be permitted for the students to contact school officials or 911. I just like to leave that entire paragraph, please. Okay, do we have a second? Mr. Owens, discussion. Mr. Lillian. I think that particular session is extremely important because students were told to turn off the cell phones, correct? No. To, no. 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 To silence. No. Silence. Excuse me, silence the cell phones. My, apolo my, my apologies. Watch students. I, I, I understand that. Now, we're giving permission to students to use the cell phone, provided teachers allow it. They have to turn it off. Now, it seems to me in an emergency situation, do you want them not to use the cell phone at all? No, John, they're going to take the phone. I, what, they're, going to, John, they're going to take the phone. And yeah, but the point the is they should be allowed to use it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I asked you. You want to eliminate it. I want to eliminate, no, I want to eliminate the paragraph that says that they can't use their cell phones, except to call 911 and school officials. So if, if you remove so now it, it there's no reference. If you take it out, they, they can, can use it. They can use it with teachers' permission. 
for what else? Yeah, but they're they just that. use it. They're just going to use it. They're just going to use it. Yes, I'm aware of it. I mean, we just did well, and didn't want to give teachers permission because your statement was that you didn't want the teachers We just did an unannounced drill in my in an unannounced lockdown drill in my school. Watch kids doing the lockdown drill. If they don't know about it ahead of time, if there has been no rumors through the security guards, they are really scared. And they need to do what they need to do as a teacher. I am telling you in dealing with students that if they are scared, we need them to we need to allow them to do what we need what they need to do. It is the only humane option. Okay, uh, I would just like to say that I would hope that when we teach students, we make clear to them that there are all that there are emergency situations in which we uh, we do not necessarily follow the rules. I know I always told my classes, even elementary school, that I expected them to follow the uh, directions of any adult who worked in the school. But of course, if they knew something they knew was wrong, of course they shouldn't do it. And they understand that. Uh, you know, I so don't the teacher think, gives them permission. Uh, uh, yes, in other words, that uh, if the situation is such as an emergency, we do things differently. Uh, I know uh, I was in Hurricane Agnes in, uh, that way long ago in western New York, and the schools were used, the high school was used as an evacuation center, and the superintendent used the school lunches, used the food to feed the people, you know, and, what, and got permission late, and later. You know. And so that's an emergency. And I think we have uh, students. Are, we should be teaching them that one doesn't blindly follow rules if it's if it's dangerous or if it's an emergency. So you know, I don't think we need to tell them specifically. Yes, Mr. Slochak. Motion to extend five minutes so that we may finish the code of conduct resolutions. Okay, we have a second to that, Mr. Lumi. Yes. Okay, <coughs> we have more comments on the situation, Mr. Spencer. Did you have something to say? Yes. Did I get a vote? I get a vote on the five minutes? Uh, oh, sorry. For the resolution. For five yes. minutes. Mr. Slosha, Mr. Lumia, five minutes more. Yes. Thank yes. you. Okay, thank you. It's a given. Yes, Mr. Spencer. Just that I concur with Ms. Levin that in emergency situations, you have to allow the children to reach out the way they need to reach out. I've witnessed just what you explained during um, unannounced lockdown drills and, and even announced lockdown drills. Um, we, we have to allow the, the kids to reach out the way they need to. In emergency situations, real time, they're gonna do it anyway, and you don't wanna limit, you don't wanna put the liability on the teacher um, you. To, to, uh, you know, to limit their uh, use. If I can just say quickly. Oh yes, Mr. Carrion, and then Mr. Slowshire, Mr. Rubin. Uh, uh, the, being in, when you're in the school, and we made a very strong concerted effort, we don't have lockdown drills where students have to now decide whether this is true or not. We call them a drill. We let them know it's a drill. And even with the drill, as Trustee Spencer just mentioned, this can be very overwhelming for many students. Yes. And when it's overwhelming for many students, you want students to be able to contact the person that they feel most safe with. Because we, the reason why we have lockdown drills is because things are happening throughout the country and we have to get students we have to just train them so the idea that this is such a reality we shouldn't even be calling it a lockdown and then tell them later this was fake so we've worked on that but the reality is this is extremely traumatizing when you walk in a building and you and you walk with the police officers and you start opening the doors and you see what we have to do in today's day and age I mean, a fire drill, you stand out, you stand with your friends, they tell you not to talk, you whisper anyway, but this is completely <laughs> different. This is a completely yes, different it is. environment. So yes, it is. the idea is, whether it comes out or it's just saying that you, you, just, you can make contact, it, it's the same implication. It's whether the board wants to decide whether you want to see it as half full or half empty, but it's the same full glass. It's just how you want it in it or not. All right, uh, Mr. Right. Slowshow. John, you broke it. <laughs> Students' idea of having a cell phone is one thing. 
Students' idea of having a cell phone in school is one thing. Parents, their reasoning is completely different, okay? Students think it's, yep, I got my phone, look stuff up, talk, whatever. You ask a parent the reason why they're giving their elementary school child a cell phone at, not all, but some, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, is for an emergency. And that's the first thing to say, you have this phone for an emergency. You call me if there's an emergency. It's, as the superintendent has just stated, it is society today. Look, I'm not a big proponent of cell phones in the school and whatnot, but listen, it makes the kids feel safe, it makes the parents feel safe. So we have to, we have to adjust. And as Madam President said, if we're educating the kids properly in the classroom, if you have a phone, God forbid if there's an emergency, that's what you do. You're not to use your phone for recreational purposes during school. Mr. Rubin. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Carrion, I've been out of the classroom for a very long time, decades. So I would just like to ask you, perhaps you could clarify something for me. That in the event of emergency, one of the things that you want to do is control the information that's out so the rumor mill doesn't you don't want to control the room you can't. can't you can't no that's you what can't. i'm asking you can't. okay you can't. how does eliminating this well let me ask the question right? yeah Maybe no i okay how does eliminating this control the rumor mill so that the correct information gets out to the public not a million different rumors. no th and it's that's the, but point. that's the point the point is it's not about that it's whether you're saying the same thing whether you eliminate it or you don't it's just a matter of the board <coughs> deciding if you just change that language to say they're able to make contact or you eliminate it without without specifying who they can make contact, so you're saying you're so saying the same thing. Like it's just a matter of which one you want to keep. You want to keep it with just saying in general they can make contact or you take it out, but it's saying the same thing. As long as you don't put the delineation of the things you can make contact to. That's what I'm saying. Time's up. Time's up. Okay. Um, does anyone want to extend the time? Uh, Mrs. Goodman, for how long? Two minutes to answer Mr. Rubin's question, which I think is very Okay, valid. wait a minute. Do we have a second? I'm second. Seconded. Uh, all those in favor of two minutes? Okay. So, uh, wait a minute. I got the count. <laughs> Mr. Rubin, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Slowshow, Mr. Lumia, Ms. R Rappaport. Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Kelly. Opposed? Mr. Owen. Two minutes. Okay. Um, the reason that I'm taking the answer to this one is because I just had to do it. We also do lockdown drills announced and unannounced. Um, and the students take them in today's day and age extremely seriously. It is not like a fire drill where they sort of stand outside and hang with their friends and go whisper, whisper, whisper. whisper. They are standing in the corner, away from the door. Their voices are low. If they are texting or using the phone, they are it's without sound. And because they are away from the door, you can't see that the lights are, are on from the phone. And as for the rumor mill, there is still an adult in the room. And that's me. When, when my students start hearing, oh, I heard that there's somebody running around on the third floor. I mean, I, I got that. And my response was, really? I'm not hearing anything, so let's just stay where we are and be calm. And the, the, the trick is you got to trust your teachers. you got to trust your teachers to handle the thing right for their kids. And, and I think that that paragraph, if you leave it in by, and delineate that they can only call 911 or school officials, that's just not fair. You're leaving the teachers hanging out to dry, and you're leaving the kids hanging out to dry. Why make them feel guilty doing something that's the most natural instinct in the world, which is to contact their parents if they're feeling scared? And why would you want a teacher who relies on the rapport that she or he builds with those students to be able to teach them? Why would you want a teacher to have to put that rapport at risk enforcing an unenforceable rule because he or she does not have tenure and they're afraid they'll get in trouble. Okay, I think we really need to be careful about the words that we put in the, in the policy manual and in the code of conduct. So my personal opinion would be to either um, end the sentence after students 
when we permitted for the students, period, in an emergency situation, or just eliminate the paragraph? Okay, uh, well, let's stick to what you are, uh, what the motion on the floor is. Eliminate the paragraph. Yeah, that was it, I said yes, that was it. Otherwise, it would get confusing. All right, okay, uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor of eliminating the paragraph dealing with emergency situations. Ms. Rappaport, Mr. Odoms, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Slowshower, Mrs. Kellant, opposed? Mr. Rubin, Mr. Lumi. I think we're now ready to vote on the Code of Conduct as amended with the ver various amendments we have made. Be resolved the board, uh, that the board hereby adopt the Code of Conduct for the 2019-2020 school year, policy 5300. A copy of which shall be incorporated by reference into the minutes of, the, of, this, of this meeting as amended and verified resolved that the court of conduct shall be disseminated to all staff, student, and parents, legal guardians, with instructions that the policies and rules therein must be reviewed and adhered to. Okay, we need a motion. Mrs. Goodman, second. Mr. Lumia, discussion. All those in favor? Closure, are you voting or not? No. Okay. Okay. Mr. Rubin. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rubin, Mrs. Goodman, uh, who else is about? Are you voting, Mr. Lumi? No. Uh, Mrs. Rappaport, Mr. Odoms, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Kelly. Opposed? Mr. Slowshower, Mr. Lumia. Sorry. 8.01, Consent Agenda Resolution. Is there anyone who wishes to remove something from the Consent Agenda? Okay. Resolved the Board of Education is hereby approve the following Consent Agenda items as stated. 8.02, 8.03, 8.04, 8.05, 8.06, 8.07, 8.08, 8.09, 8.10, 8.11, and 8.12. Do we have a motion? So moved. Mr. Rubin, second. Mr. Odoms, all those in favor? Uh, unanimous. Nine point zero one, second reading and adoption of policies. Resolved the Board of Education of the Wapper Center School District. Hereby approves the second reading of and adopts the following policies based on <coughs> upon the first reading by the board and the recommendation of the policy committee as stated. So moved. Okay, we have a second. A second, Mrs. Goodman. Discussion. Mr. Slowshower. Doesn't work just to speak in your life. No, it's, it's being recorded, so it really is important. It's in my Referencing policy 2250 board committees. At the last board meeting, this policy was uh, voted down. Some minor changes were made, but there were no changes made to the reason why uh, several board members uh, did not vote in favor of this. So I'm once again going to bring up for discussion and hopefully we can make a minor change. And it's the last paragraph and the last sentence where it says, however, in no event shall they be assigned any work or tasks by the committee with regards to student participation. Uh, I, I still bring up the same issue that I had. I, I, we're restricting students from participating. I mean, I'd like to just change the language. If everyone would want to consider this, just the, if they want to volunteer, I don't see why, if they're willing to volunteer to do the work, why, they should, why there should be any restriction. All right, is that as an amendment? I'd like to make an amendment to change it where the student, if they're willing to and they wish to volunteer to participate and in any particular work, um, assignments, that I leave it up to the student. If they want to do it, fine. I don't think we should be dictating to them. Okay, I need, I need the exact wording. If okay, I apologize. The student, yeah. the student committee member will participate in the committee meetings to dialogue with committee members to ensure that the student's voice is represented. Instead of however, in no event shall they be assigned any work. Uh, if a student wishes to participate and volunteer uh, to do any work assignments or tasks by the committee. 
Would that be sufficient? Okay, uh, are you eliminating things or are you I want just to eliminate, adding it? I'm sorry, I want to eliminate in no event shall they be assigned any work or task by the committee. And we could change it with uh, if, the, if students wish to volunteer for any assignments or, or to work or any tasks by the committee. Thank you. We have a second. Mr. Odoms, discussion? Ms. Rappaport. Um, I, I think that we have to leave in no event shall they be assigned any work because I think the point is that we don't, we want to make it clear that they're not being assigned work. But you can say, but in the event they wish to volunteer, that would that be sufficient. Be okay. That would be so fine. So then that way it satisfies both, both sides. Both sides. Right. I'm and okay with that. Then are you changing your amendment so that we can look? I will change my amendment to include the original language and what uh, Trustee Rappaport uh, has just suggested. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Mr. Miller? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you Go always home. look at him? I agree. I agree with your sentiment. I just, I just don't know if that's even necessary to put right. If it's not assigned, if, if the work is not assigned, then it doesn't have to be right. Then, if they want to volunteer, whatever they want to do, volunteer whatever they want to volunteer to do, they do. As long, you know, I mean, as long as the, the committee or the committee chair doesn't assign them. You know what, I mean, I just want them to have the They're not going to be assigned. They want to do work. What's going to happen if they're assigned work and they don't do it anyway? I mean, it's kind of like, kind of, I don't understand this, but I don't think it's necessary to add that on there. If they want to volunteer to do something and they're on a committee, yeah. I think they're welcome to do that. Under the existing language, your point Correct. is well taken. Okay, Ms. Rappaport? Yeah, but the language sounds prohibited. You know, if you say under no, um, event shall they be assigned? It almost sounds. It almost sounds like uh, they're not allowed. You know, the the, the tone of it makes it, it, it's prohibitive. Whereas if you include that, you know, and, and Ms. Kellen's point has been that um, we don't want to assign work to kids who are already overloaded. But on the other hand, if they want to volunteer. Why not? So I just see it as kind of satisfying. Okay, thank you, Mr. Edwards. Thank you. How about you, uh, if you add, un, instead of just add under the supervision of the committee, because most likely if they're part of the committee, they're going to be collaborating with another mm -hmm. person in that committee. So if I'm a student, I want to do some work. Uh, uh, another adult or another adult on the committee should I should be working with that person. So that way I'm not alone. I'm, it's not something I'm going to miss the assignment because somebody's going to be watching me, managing me, and uh, she's working with me. That way, and, and, if, if the student is going to be on the committee, that is a special student because they're going to, they're going above and beyond their own work. They are responsible enough to want to be a part of the committee, and then that mature. I don't think they're going to uh, make any type of mistakes. Plus, they're going to be under the supervision of the chairperson in that committee. So I don't think we should have that they cannot be assigned any type of work. Or just leave the language and just let that work itself out within the committee and the chairperson of that committee. I, if I could just say quickly, as a former ESL teacher and understanding the semantics of how things work, I'm, I'm just looking at it and then thinking back to the same, the same conversation about the discipline of whether you keep it or not. So I was in favor, like, keep the student contact. I mean, I don't get a vote, but, you know, the student contact, because it, it almost gives permission to the student. I think the way it reads, it's almost, it's almost restricting, but what, what I think it's really trying to just say is that as committee members or, 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 or committee leaders, you, you're not allowed to sign work. Not that kids can't do work. That's correct. Right, but the way it reads, it sort of, it sort of makes it feel that they can't do anything. So, in terms, in like, 
it, it should just be plain and simple, and I've learned this over the years. I, there's not a better writer than I'm, I'm present in at the board. I'm telling you, and just like more simple, the student's voice is represented. It. Committee members or committee members of the committee are not allowed to assign tasks, hmm. and that 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 doesn't say that they can't be part because if they're sitting there, an assignment. If you're not engaging, you get a grade for class participation. That's an assignment. If you're not participating, so the the whole thing is that it's understood, but they it's may just not want to volunteer. What? Because they may not want to volunteer that. Oh, well. if, there's, if there's language in there, so to me, it's still being restricted. I mean, I would either just delete, to delete, <coughs> delete it after represented, and leave it to the yeah, discretion of the it. committee members. I'm just going by, you know, you want to empower them? To I want, I mean, like I said at the last meeting, uh, that sentence to me doesn't empower our students and doesn't work with what our core values and mission statement is. We're, we're telling the students, join a committee and then don't do anything. Could we, could we have an extension of time? I'm just someone, trying to uh, like to give them the choice. A motion to extend time because our time's up. Ms. Rappaport? Three minutes. Okay, do we have a second? Mr. Goodman, all those in favor? Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Sloshauer, Mr. Lumia, Mr. Galetta, Mr. Spencer, Ms. Rappaport, Mrs. Gellin. Opposed? Mr. Rubin, uh, Mr. Oaks, uh, are you abstaining? Abstain, abstain. Okay. Uh, I think that Mrs. Rappaport's just added, would you repeat the sentence that you had added? Keeping all the words, but just your sentence. Um, 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 well, I don't know if I've already said however, but students may volunteer if they wish. Okay, I think that's nice and simple, well, uh, personally. Um, all right, uh, is there any other, are there any other comments? Mr. Adams, do you have another comment? Uh, Mrs. Goodman? I actually like the way the superintendent did it instead. Um, and that is that it's clearer where the restriction lies. Um, and it should be, Okay. Um, however, where it's actually, it's, let's eliminate that you know bad passive voice and say, however, in no event shall committee members assign any work to students without their volunteering. Or just, I think the thing is that we, I'm sorry, if students don't volunteer, there's a reason for that and we need to respect it. And I don't really think it's appropriate for committee members to be assigning students anything. That's what their teachers, their bosses, and their manage, you know, are, are for, and their parents are for. That's, that's not our place. And just because we don't assign them a written task doesn't mean they're not doing anything, and it doesn't mean they're not learning anything. It just means we're being considerate of, it, of their time. So I would just like to make it clear that either the board, the committee is restricted, or to add Mrs. Rappaport, Trustee Rappaport's word, that they can volunteer if they want, either way. Okay, uh, are there anything else, or are we ready to vote on Ms. Rappaport's I amendment? I just have one comment. Yes, Mr. Lillian. Students can participate Whatever discussion the committee has is doing, they should they have enough work to do during the school day. They should not be assigned anything. Correct. That's our job. <coughs> the job of the committee members to do what they're voted to do. So as far as I'm concerned, the students have enough on that plate. And I tell you right now, depending on who the chairman is, they have a lot of influence on those particular students. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, it's mm -hmm. let's keep it the way it is. They can they can they can uh, participate in any discussion which is valuable because they're they're in the trenches. But so far as assigning things to them or volunteer, let them volunteer, we as depending on how strong the com the, 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 the committee chairman is, those kids will want will, will take the will, will be forced to bag the guy that really wanted to to volunteer. Okay. All right. Yes, Miss Rappaport. We're not suggesting that we eliminate that statement. We're just saying that. Let's say you have a kid who's really interested in, you know, government, and they want to volunteer to be active. Why shouldn't they, they can be, be elected? Valid. 
they can't they can't be at or participating in a discussion. But to go outside of the discussion and to have them do their work, I'm opposed to that. I think they got enough of the plate. How do you know that? How do I know that? To. Okay, I was a student. I was a teacher. Time's up, time's but you up. have a requirement. If you're uh, having we, we a student. We need to move for more time. Okay, uh, does someone make a motion for more time? No? Okay, then I guess we're ready to vote. All right. All those. We, okay, we we're, we're the policy as it was written and presented by the policy committee with the amendment. We're voting on the amendment proposed by Ms. Rappaport. Ms. Pedro, could you read the exact wording back? So what I have is the student committee member will participate in the committee meetings to dialogue with committee members to ensure that the student's voice is represented, comma. However, in no event shall they be assigned any work or task by the committee, but students may volunteer if they wish. All right. All right. All, all those in favor as amended. Okay, Ms. Rappaport, Mr. Odom, Mr. Spencer, Mr. Galetta, Mrs. Goodman, Mr. Slowshower, <laughs> Mrs. Kellen. Uh, audience. It was me. <laughs> okay, opposed. Mr. Rubin, Mr. Lumia. Well, Thank you, everybody. Yes. That was now we have longer. 10.01. Does anyone have an addition to the agenda? I'm sorry, oh, Madam President. No, we need oh, to, to pass. The to pass. Oh, oh, we, oh, we didn't vote on it. I thought we were voting on it as amended. No. Okay. All right, okay. Sorry. All right, okay. Uh, then uh, we are voting on policies 2250, 5404, and 9620. Right? Yes. With the amendments. With the, amendments. With the as amended. So we have to vote on them as all three. Do we, can we vote on that's... all three together? Yes. 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 All right. Very good. <coughs> all right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Now, are there any additions to the agenda? Uh, 11.01, comments from the public. At this time, all the rules before are fine, but you may comment on anything that is not on the agenda, as long as it has to do with this uh, school district business. Um, and even the cheer programs between the two high schools 
are not the same. There's a very clear difference. Um, I don't want to go into them here, but if anybody wants to speak to us, if any of us parents can answer that. Um, we know there were some complaints over the winter season by a parent or two, um, but it was never addressed with the cheerleaders, which I do know has happened in other sports. It happened in gymnastics last year. It happened in basketball this year. This, the other athletes were asked this is what we're being told. They were questioned. They got their opinion. Our girls didn't get that chance. As of now, their chances of going to NCA camp for August, which they normally go to, is probably not going to happen. Because everything has to get taken care of mid-June. Camp close, down, uh, payments, and we don't have a coach. And this was all done. And like I said, there's no communication. We're in the dark. There's been rumors. We were talking about rumor mill. There's rumor mill about what's going on. I'm beyond frustrated. My daughter is um, a ninth grader at Ketchum on Varsity Squad. We had supposed to have three more years there. I'm not so sure she's going this year. And it's a shame. She loves the sports. This team has been amazing for her. She went on JV as an eighth grader. These girls are awesome. And we have 11 juniors going to seniors who don't know if they're going to cheer their senior year of high school. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, I think that I think I made all my points. I don't know what else. But I, I really appreciate, I mean, I know you guys are the uh, ones who finally, uh, final approval. Hopefully we can get this done by the June 3rd meeting. Because if not, we won't have we won't have a team. I have to do it at a, at a meeting. Um, the parents of the present sixth and seventh grade special ed inclusion parents have not been formally been informed of the changes to their program. Um, the responses from the school administration about this have been inconsistent, and the dates given on when the community would be informed, several of them have since passed. Amendments, uh, no meetings, is the way in which the previous emails state these families would be informed. Amendments cannot be made, though, to an IEP that's not finalized which causes a problem as the district plans, um, as many have been told, to put these in front of the board at the end of June. This causes parents to have a CSE meeting in the summer of whatever staff is available, not to sit with their team that could speak on which program or pieces of the program that does or doesn't exist or it's gonna be added would be available. It's whoever's there, which most would perceive as a predetermined um, meeting, which I could imagine that we would do anything like that. Um, respectfully, I, I have a problem offering parts of a program or not offering parts of the program in the winter or the spring when we all had our meetings when the district's office was aware that this was going to happen. And the, I, I have to say that uh, the fact that it was not just parents, that still staff don't know definitive changes to something that everyone knows is happening is real and, and quite sad and alarming. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, Mr. Lumia. And I'll second to adjourn. Okay.